Hello friends, as uh, promised to you, I am coming up with my uh, first case presentation video and uh, today I will talk about uh, inguinal hernia. Now before understanding inguinal hernia, we must uh, try to find out what exactly the hernia means. So hernia is actually the provision of uh, a part or whole of the viscous through the wall of the cavity that contains it. Now to understand it, let's see the lateral view of the abdomen now this is the umbilicus this is the rectus sheath and this is the bowel beneath it going mesentery then omentum all these things are there now if there is some defect over here now, now this thing is lined by the peritoneum now they say so there is some defect in the um, rectus sheath. Now what will happen, first this peritoneum will protrude out, this will act as the, um, the sac of the hernia. Inside the sac, we will find the bowel coming, bowel or missing anything up. So this particular part is called uh, hernia. So this is a protrusion of a part or whole of the viscous through the wall of the cavity that is containing it. So this is exactly what is uh, we understand by uh, hernia. Now see similar thing happens in case of uh, um, inguinal hernia. What actually ha is happening in inguinal hernia? We find that this is the abdomen, abdominal cavity. This is the inguinal lesion. Now this is the anterior superior iliac spine. Here we have pubic symphysis and pubic tubercles now this region is inguinal canal this is the floor of the inguinal canal and here is the defect in the um, transversalis uh, fascia this is a deep inguinal ring here we have a superficial inguinal ring or the Hasselbeck's triangle is over here now uh, the content can come out through this opening through so the deep inguinal ring and form the inguinal hernia or because of the weakness of the floor the hernia can protrude from here or there can be the um, defect in the Hasselbeck triangle hernia can directly come from here so this particular thing is called uh, the inguinal hernia now uh, we'll uh, discuss in detail about the inguinal hernia first thing I, uh, I, I will just like to uh, tell you uh, uh, in the form of the case presentation. So this is one of the trial uh, from the case presentation. Now this, this goes like this. Uh, the name of my patient is Mr. Amit. He is 23 year old male. He is a resident of uh, say Kashipur. He is um, liberal uh, by occupation and Hindu by religion. And he was admitted to our hospital on this particular date and the patient has been examined today. Now the chief complaint of my patient is a lump which he, he felt over the right side of his uh, um, uh, lower abdomen or specifically you can say the right side of the inguinal region and um, pain over the lump or, or, or the pain over the region since last uh, one month say. So uh, the, the chief complaint of the patient had been the uh, swelling or the, over the right inguinal region since last uh, four months and the pain over the uh, swelling since last two months. Now history of present illness will go like this. My patient was apparently well say four months back when he noticed a swelling over the right uh, inguinal region which was sudden in onset and gradually it is progressing or rather gradu gradually progressing in nature and uh, there is uh, no history uh, of uh, any sudden increase in, in size of the swelling. Now, the, now we have to tell what are the things that causes increase in size of the swelling. Now, what are the aggravating factors? Uh, on the other hand, now this um, uh, my uh, my patient says the size of the swelling increases whenever he coughs or when there is constipation or when there is any difficulty in passing uh, urine or when in any case when he when he lifts some heavy weight, uh, then the size of the swelling increases. On the other hand, the swelling decreases when he lies down or when he himself tries he 
uh, he himself tries to um, take back the swelling or uh, he reduces the swelling by himself these are the conditions where the swelling reduces uh, uh, so these are the relieving and, and these are the aggravating factor now my second thing about patient told the pain over the swelling now, now we have to describe everything about the pain the pain is um, suddenly onset or gradual onset of the pain uh, in the right angular region in the dull aching or severe in intensity what uh, uh, things causes increase in the pain what thing causes decrease in the pain and is the pain is associated with vomiting all this thing we have to describe in in what is called history of present illness now as i told um, what else uh, what things can cause this uh, particular swelling in the inguinal region so we, you have to rule out uh, and you have to describe the swelling uh, now this in the inguinal region swelling can be a swelling arising from the parietal wall in the form of some lipoma in the form of sebaceous cyst then there can be swelling in the inguinal region uh, there can be uh, inguinal hernia or femoral hernia the swelling can be in the scrotal region in the form of hydrocele or the epididyma orchitis or epididymal cyst now these are the various differential diagnoses but as the patient says the swelling is coming and it is reducing or it disappearing this goes more and more in favor of the inguinal hernia now what thing must have caused this inguinal hernia so you have to take the history of whether there is any history of chronic constipation chronic strangury the history of chronic cough there is history of any heavy weight lifting there is history of any surgical uh, operation or operations done over the abdomen that might have loosened the abdominal wall uh, no no these are the things that uh, uh, causes increase in the inter abdominal pressure and these uh, um, um, leads to the formation of inguinal hernia now uh, what complication it might cause the you have to take history whether at any moment of the time the hernia has become irreducible or there was very any severe pain at any moment or uh, there was uh, there was any vomiting at, at at any moment or there was some uh, say redness over of the skin over the swelling all these thing you have to ask that will tell you what is the progression of this swelling so uh, as i told in history of present illness we have just discussed what is the disease what must have caused this disease and if we leave the disease what else it can cause this will all this thing we can take in the history of present illness then we go for uh, and then we go for the past history in the past history if the patient any surgery has been done then you can say the my, the, my patient has been operated for appendix or the admin uh, laparotomy has been done to the patient some 3 to 4 years back if such history is there you have to mention about that history then is there any um, history of diabetes hypertension tuberculosis this thing you have to mention in the past history that come to the personal history the personal history my my patient is uh, uh, is non um, alcoholic he is non smoker he is non tobacco chewer he is vegetarian then uh, then come to the family history uh, family history the um, the patient uh, father mother and two brother are there in the family they all are healthy no uh, disease uh are, is there in their family then we come uh, in the um, do, um, treatment history any treatment what the patient might have taken for this disease or the any other disease you have to uh, to write a treatment history and drug history is the if is my patient is uh, you say is a uh, sensitive or reactive to any drug then you have to mention over it then we next we come to the general physical examination now in the general physical examination it says that uh, my patient is mr amit he is uh, 23 year old male he is uh, moderately built and nourished he is well oriented to time place and person he is uh, sitting comfortably over the bed then there is no pallor cyanosis jaundice ictus or lymphadenopathy his blood pressure is 130 by 90 mm of mercury his pulse is 86 felt over the right radial which is uh, normal rate normal rhythm non collapsing type of the pulse then we go for the systemic examination and systemic examination uh, about the respiratory system say bilateral air it is normal there is no creps or there is no ronchi cardiovascular system s1 and s2 is heard normally 
and there is no added sound. Central nasal system patient GCS is 15 by 15 and uh, his uh, cranial nerve uh, examination is normal. Now we come to the main important part that is the local examination on, of the region. Now before this local examination it is very important now, go for local examination. Now, before you uh, do uh, local examination of uh, any part or say any disease, it is very important to describe it like this, that I have taken consent of the patient, I have fully explained the patient what I am going, uh, going to do, I have uh, maintained the privacy of the patient, uh, privacy means you have arranged some screen and see that no one else is, say, uh, else is, saying, uh, is, is seeing the patient and if there is female patient then I had made sure that I had one female attendant along with me then after all this I have I stripped my patient from the, from the level of the nipples to the mid of the thigh or from uh, say uh, mid, um, from the level of the nipple to say I have removed I have, uh, the, uh, below that patient was not wearing anything then I have examined the patient in uh, standing position and in the lying down position these are the two positions I have examined the patient first I have examined my patient in the standing position so just assume that patient is, is standing the first thing comes is the inspection now in this section inspection you say that uh, always come if there is any bilateral uh, organ always compared to the normal side say in comparison to the uh, left normal side i could see a swelling in the right inguinal region this swelling is around now you say you can uh, Judge, you, you just said swelling is around say six, uh, say eight into six um, say centimeter. It is piriform on shape or globular in, in, in shape, and it is uh, to what it is extending. It is extending up to the uh, mid of the inguinal region or up to the base of the scrotum, or it is coming uh, up, up to uh, 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 the whole uh, scrotum is filled with, uh, up with the swelling. So this is the extent of the swelling. Then skin of the swelling is smooth. Then margins are well defined or well made out. Then there is impulse on cuffing is there or not. If you ask the patient to cuff, whether the swelling increases in size. You can say the impulse on cuffing is uh, present uh, in my patient. Then uh, ask the patient to reduce the swelling by himself. If he is able to reduce, then you can very well mention this, that the swelling is reducible. Or well, you can ask the patient to lie down and see whether the swelling is getting reduced or not. So you get two very important size signs. One is impulse on cuffing and one is the reducibility. Both the, uh, the signs goes in favor of the um, the inguinal hernia now for the inguinal hernia it's very important for us to know whether this is a direct inguinal hernia or the indirect inguinal hernia now for this i will uh, i will discuss or tell you just brief about the anatomy uh, of the inguinal canal which is definitely which is asked so uh, from out if you go inside you first you have uh, the skin the superficial fascia then you come to the external oblique upper neuris